Hello, and welcome back to Nui Sleepcast. Today we'll be reading more of Higurashi, so um, please relax and uh, enjoy the story. I took it a little too easy in the morning, in the morning of my day off. I was totally late. Today was the day Rana and Mion were going to show me around Hinamizawa. Rana and Mion were already waiting at the meeting place. Kei-chan, you're late. Sorry, the show I was watching last night was really interesting. Blame that. Oh, so that's your excuse for being late and keeping two girls waiting? Me, Chen, you just got here yourself. <laughs> last night's episode of A Day in the Life of was interesting, wasn't it? She was just as guilty as me. Rena was carrying a pretty heavy looking handman. What is that? Mion answered my unspoken question with a wink. That's right, Rena really did make a picnic. Kei chan, after you left, Rena pulled out all the stops. It's not like I forced her to do it. It was nothing, so don't worry about it, okay? She's been like this since last night, you know. Can you take responsibility for this? Alright, alright, I'm a man after all. I'll take responsibility. Huh? R responsibility for what? <laughs> they both turned around slowly to look at Rena. Our gazes drifted downwards at the massive handbag she was carrying. It didn't seem logically feasible that it would be entirely filled with lunchboxes. Except this was Rena we were talking about here. About two kilos, I guess. When Rena was picking it up, I could see she was struggling a bit. I say five. Five kilos of food? You're exaggerating. Katie Ken is a boy after all. I thought you he could probably eat a lot, so I made a lot, okay? <laughs> Let's get going. Heave ho. Just from the way she was lifting it up, I couldn't believe that the only things in it were lunchboxes. Correction, I'd say five kilos too. <laughs> I'll help out, but all of it needs to be eaten. I won't forgive you if you make Rena sad, got it? The only thing I could do at that moment was exercise a bit to make myself hungrier. Yeah, that's all you could really do in that situation. Having finished with the pleasant trees, we began our least really stroll. A carefree walk bathed in the gentle morning sunlight. I couldn't have imagined something so wholesome existed during my time in the city. These were the boonies after all. No slovenly jet desk, jo desk jockeys striking to work on the weekends out here. It, was, it really was a nice place, peaceful and quiet. Yeah, it's got like a, like a tranquil feel to it, but um... This is Hikarashi, so something uh, quite unsavory is, maybe not unsavory, something sinister is lurking beneath the surface. <laughs> as sparsely populated as the village was, you could still run into people just by walking around. <gasps> Good day. Good day. Oh, you would be Mebarakun, I believe. My two companions exchanged greetings with everybody we ran across. All of them, all of these passerbys even knew my name. When did I become this famous? We passed three people, and when all three of them knew me, I started to feel a bit paranoid. Hmm. <laughs> it's a bit sad to say, everyone knows everyone. Everyone knows everyone since there are so people here in Hinamizawa. So that means... So that means when an unfamiliar face walks by, they automatically assume it's that Maybara fella who just moved here? Yeah, that's how it works out. It was a process of elimination you could only pull off in a place like this. It was quite effective. Yeah. You know, small towns like that... It, it, it makes sense, because like, it's a small town. But... Um... Because the community is so small, I wonder if they secretly harbor, like, mistrust towards outsiders. 
Mm-hmm. From now on, I'd better make sure to maintain a good reputation. The day I'm discovered gawking at a dirty magazine in the bookstore, I can expect all the villagers labeling me as a lech by the next day. Hinami is not to be trifled with. That's the thing with small towns, those don't like rumors and stuff travel very quickly too. I feel like that could that could end up being a problem depending on uh, who you ask. That's not the end of this nightmare. Of course I know them. The first person we met was this old man, Takezu, from the Mi <laughs> Maki no Bike Shop. Japanese names are hard. His hobbies are bonsai and playing the flute. Hmm. Next we met next we meet the grocer's second son, Daisuke kun. His hobby is sharpshooting and he hopes to become an ace sniper in the future. And the person we just met was Mio san, the nurse from the clinic. Her hobbies are bird watching and photography. Do you know the names of everyone we passed by? Not only that, they also know what they like to do in their free time, and their occupation, and even their profiles. Seeing my surprise, Mion and Rene exchange looks and burst into laughter. Well, yeah. We're not like the city where people hardly know, know their neighbors. Then let's try it out. You there, who am I? <laughs> You're Keiichi Mebara. You say some mean things, but you're actually a kind, shy person. <laughs> it's been three weeks since you transferred here. Your hobby is taking afternoon naps. Lately, you switched over to wearing boxers. How would you know that? Didn't you? That's enough, that's enough. Boxers? Enough of that. Apparently, there's absolutely nothing you can keep hidden here. Hinami's house is not a place to be trifled with. I wonder, did you see him at the department store buying boxers? But how did she know that he switched from briefs to boxers though? <laughs> it feels more like you guys are showing me off rather than showing me around. That's right. We're par parading around like this after all. Don't you think so too? My cage hen is fitting right here in Hinamizawa. The population of men in Hinamizawa is shrinking, so the villagers welcome anybody who's new here. Oh, so they don't hate outsiders. I thought about brushing it off with something to the effect of you're kidding me, but I held back. Had I ever greeted someone who had just moved to the city like this before? Hmm. That's not something that really crosses the the mind of city people, I don't think. Thinking about it made me believe what they said wasn't a joke at all. We passed another person. Of course, we were called out to again in the same way. Oh my, good day. It's wonderful seeing you getting along. This lady here is Fushishima-san. Good day. Oh my, my Barasukun, how wonderful for you having a lovely girl on each arm. How are you? Getting used to life here? Instead of regurgitating a prepared response like I would have in the city, I responded with an emphatic nod. The old woman chuckled, voicing her appreciation of how energetic I was. Good. As I looked over to Rena and Mion, they gave me a wink. So now, so now then, it's about time to have lunch, maybe, maybe? Rena's brilliant smile signaled the approach of an event that both Mion and I were trying to forget. We both looked at each other. I'm a man. I'll do what I can. But it's just too much. It's fine, Kei-chan. Leave it to this old man. Mion has never seemed as reliable as she does right now. I expect no less from the class representative. Rena, if we're going to eat, we might as well go somewhere with a good view. Oh, yes. Good idea, I agree. Rena nodded her head happily in response to Mion's proposal. Hmm. Well, there'd be lots of places with a good view here, wouldn't there be? But well, we're at a shrine now. 
cresting the top of a stone stairway, a shrine drawn straight out of my imagination appeared before us. It had, it had worn down a bit over the years, but the fallen leaves had been sucked up, giving it a tiny, tidy feeling. Oh. Here is Furu, Furu Day Shrine. It's probably the place with the best view around. This place, be sure to remember it. On our next break, a festival will be held here. Oh, isn't it a bit too early in the season for a festival? The Wata Watanagashi isn't a summer festival. Longdo used to be a celebration of the end of winter. I was embarrassed for assume, assuming that festivals had to be held in the summer. Oh, it is a pretty view. Now then, spread out the lunch boxes, and there. Various colored lunchboxes were placed one after the other on top of the plastic sheet. It sure did smell delicious. It was Rena's home cooking. It went without saying that it would be delicious. But, isn't even, but is it even possible to finish all of this? Hey, Mion. It'll take more than just a good view to get all this down, you know. Oh. Yeah, you have two more people to help you eat it. <laughs> Good afternoon. It was Rika-chan and Satoko. Why are they here? Mion grinned over at me. I see, so this is her secret plan. To power in numbers. You have my thanks, Mion. Following up when all the pieces are in place is my specialty. We just had to come since there is such a commotion. What is the meaning of this? Take a look. It's time for lunch. Buffet style. A handmade gourmet meal by Rena. I can see that much. Why have you laid out a tarp on our property? The temple is public grounds, it's not yours. Keichik is right. This is everyone's property. Well, well if it's a religious... Um, grounds, then I guess it would be public, wouldn't it? Like, like a church? Can a church be private property? I wouldn't know. Oh, Rika. Oh, Rika-chan is such a good girl. Have a seat. Eat with us. After opening up a spot for Rika-chan, I probably turned my back on Satoko. Hold on one second. Where's my spot? No spot for you and nothing for you to eat. Don't worry, there's some for you too. Fine, none. I'll eat all of hers. I will not allow that, Rika. Here, chopsticks. Both Satoko and I leapt at the boxes, having it out for each other. Man, really, Keichan, you're good at leading people on. You might have a talent for this. Have a plate, one for Mi-chan and, and Rika-chan too. Run out with top pairs of chopsticks and paper plates. If we don't hurry, it'll, it'll all be eaten up. That's right, okay? We shall commence, shall we commence this battle? Please eat a lot. There's enough for everyone. Rena said as she opened up a thermos. Just then I realized that this lunch was made under the assumption that five people would be eating. It didn't change how much there was, but the implication behind it was different. Hmm. Yeah. So she did want to have like a nice lunch with everybody. That's really cute. I will need to look <laughs> Sometimes the sound in this visual novel do jump scare me a little. I will not allow you to have this hamburger. <laughs> Using your elbows against the rules, Satoko. Grabbing the back of my collar is also against the rules. It was a tough battle, blocking her with full momentum and an elbow and the opening moves. Satoko appeared to have the upper hand, but the difference in our proficiency with chopsticks proved to be fatal and gave me the upper hand. Ah, the last meatball. Satoko Hojo has been bested. No. <laughs> Satoko and I amiably began choking at the same time, falling backwards and spasming. Rika-chan patted me on the head to clear it, even though I was actually stuck in my throat. 
Seeing that made Rena rest and leaf heavily in excitement. It was almost like flowers were floating all around her. Mion advised Rena to to refrain from saying anything that would get her locked up. Yeah, yeah. You can't collect cute girls. <laughs> this is how our meals usually go. I'd do anything in my power. Just so things could say like this. Mm. Yeah. The intense battle calmed, and finally everyone reached a point where they could begin talking. Receiving tea from the thermos, I let out a small sigh. I do wonder why there are so few words in Japanese to, pra to praise how something tastes. Isn't it because the idea of the idea of togetherness during a meal didn't begin until the modern era? It seems that long ago, people ate in silence. It must have made the people preparing the food a bit sad, don't you think? Mm. It's probably because back then the people were busy even while eating and didn't have time to compliment the flavor. Mm. Not standard Japanese work, work ethic. That's just you. But you know, just hearing that it's good makes me happy. That my effort was worth it, I mean. She blushed a little as she said that. It was delicious. The absolutely perfect timing, Rika-chan struck Rena directly with praise. She looked straight at her with an expression of bewitching innocence. Oh. Huh? After Rena <laughs> uttered an intelligible, unintelligible noise, a ring of smoke rose from her head with an audible poof. Oh, Rika-chan, I'm gonna take you home. I mean, thank you. It was really delicious. Rena flushed red with excitement, embracing Rika-chan and rubbing her cheek against her so hard you could almost hear it. <laughs> it's causing a friction. To reward Rika-chan for her praise, ta-da! These are special. Two apple rabbits. After sticking toothpicks into them, she thrust them toward Rikachan. Oh, apple rabbit. That might actually be a pretty interesting VTuber concept. I don't think I've seen something like that before. It'd be really interesting to see how someone would execute something like that. Hmm? After Rikachan accepted them, the mood suddenly shifted in a bizarre way. What is it, Satsuko? What is with that defiant- what's with that defiant look? Has everyone prepared proper praise to receive apples from Renaissance? No, oh, we're making a competition out of this. Don't push yourself. What kind of praise can you think of with your weak vocab? Oh, well then, allow me to show you. After Satsuko flashed me on and me a defiant look, she changed the tone of her voice suddenly. Um, hey, so, Rena's on chans lunch? Shatako thought it was yummy too. Shatako looked up at her, looked up at her paddly while talking cutesy. Well, that was a praise. That's not even persuasion by tears. It's, that's persuasion by cuteness, isn't it? This is a Rena limited, this is a Rena limited special skill. She blushed in her, and her head spun, waving around in circles. Don't fall for it, Rena. Too late. Oh, oh. Of course, that was asking for the impossible. Rena glumped Satsuko and began rubbing her cheek against her. Oh, glump. That is, that's a word I have not heard in a long time. That's very early 2000 anime. I remember seeing that word a lot in like fanfiction. Mm. Cute. Satako is so cute. Take you home. Oh. Swish. Stab. Push. Satako was also presented with apple with apple rabbits. After stuffing them into her mouth, she gazed over at me on and me again with that defiant gaze. It took only five seconds to take down Rena. 
That's unfair. Who thinks you had such a trick? Hmm. You're gonna have to think out of the box if you want to be here with that. If it accepts you so much, why don't you reward Renaissance with some praise? Damn it. That was a dirty trick. First of all, that wasn't even praise. Hmm. I mean, she did say it was. she thought it was good, so it's kind of praise. Is that to go? You think you've won with that, didn't you? How about... How about I show you guys something much more better than your superficial gimmicks? That sounds great, Mion. What kind of trick is it? Kei-chan is going to be the one who does it. Oh. Oh, ha ha ha. You don't pull. Why don't you... Why don't I have you show me then? The writhing of an old maid. The plan of attack she, she suggested was wicked. But it was the only thing we had to beat Satoko. After sipping my tea, I started talking. Very naturally and calmly. Perfectly. It was really good, wasn't it? This is all freshly made, right? Uh, no. Actually, most of it, almost all of it was frozen stuff. Then, which ones did you make fresh? Uh, um, well... It's embarrassing. Do I really have to say? Must I? From the synergy of boy plus homemade lunchbox, her expression had melted into euphoria. I already know. This one, right? Huh? Uh-huh. Oh. Huh? Erna turned even turned an even deeper shade of red. The words I can't believe it practically written on her face. How can you tell? Oh, well, that I made it. Of course, Mion had told me beforehand. <laughs> it's been perfect so far. After acting like I was shy, I waited a beat. Mm, the timing is very important. Next would be the finisher. It had your smell. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking just straight out of a shoujo manga right there. Silence enveloped the era. Rena, face still completely red, rose solid. With a small yelp, Satika also flushed. Of course I did too. Yeah. It's so not gonna lie, it's a little bit cringy to say stuff like that out loud. I sure would like to try one of Rena's homemade apple rabbits or something. Even if this was all because I was competing against Satiko, I felt like I had crossed the line by a good nine yards, I think. Then at that point, <laughs> it was a Tupperware container filled with rabbits. Please eat some kichi kun. There's plenty for you. Oh. Instantly, dozens of the apples were shoved into my mouth, knocking me over. Okay, say, ah, kichi kun. <laughs> While she was squealing, one apple after the other was forced into my mouth. More and more a apples. How about them apples, Satoko? Looks like I win. <laughs> but at what cost? <laughs> Keiichi, that was a beautiful sacrifice. How's that, Satoko? This is our complete victory, isn't it? I can't believe it. Such trickery. It doesn't bother me at all. Satoko ground her teeth, mortified. We did it. I claimed victory as my consciousness drifted slowly away from me. <laughs> oh boy. At the time, Rena stopped her squealing as she suddenly realized something. Are you good, Chen? You're not eating it? Did the salt water make it too strong, maybe? Maybe? I really like the, uh, double talk that Rena does. It's really, really cute. Looking over, Rika Chen had pulled the toothpick out of the apple rabbit, placed it into her cupped hands, and seemed to be at a loss of what to do. Poor Mr. Rabbit, I feel sorry for him. I want to save him. <sighs> that was the sound of blood spurting from Rena's nuts. <laughs> cute, cute, cute. Tonight I will take you home. <laughs> she shook sporadically, her head wobbling back and forth. 
Then, coming back to her senses, she took all the apples around me, gathered them up with a flip, 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 and fixed them on, fixed them back on the plate. Now they're all just fine, okay? Here, I'll give them to you, Rika-chan. Okay? Okay. Rika-chan raised up Satsuko's hand like a referee after after having that plate of rabbit shoved to her, she whispered, This is our victory. Oh. Mm -mm. I see. She was working with Satsuko. <laughs> what? A comeback? I just don't care anymore. <laughs> Thus, my sacrifice ended up being in vain. Well, it's the thought that counts. <laughs> Uh, definitely worth trying, that's for sure. <laughs> it was a fun-filled, crazy day. But as soon as the sun began to set, the end of the day really did come quickly. Time flies, huh? Later, Rana and Kei-kun... Kei-chan. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Thanks for today, Mion. I had a great time. See you tomorrow. Satsuko and Rika went home as well. We parted ways with Mion and ended up with and ended up with just Rena and myself enjoying the evening air on our way home. Thanks for coming today, Ki Chicken. Was it fun? Yeah. Lots of fun. Almost feels like a waste to go home now. Ah, then well, would you mind taking a little detour maybe? Maybe? A detour? Is it far? It's a bit of a walk, but it won't take long. Since we had been walking around all day, I must have seemed a bit tired. Not feeling like te teasing Rena, I quietly nodded. Mm -hmm. Too tired for teasing. Although, right? The water sounds really nice. Mm -hmm. Like, a little bit of ASMR. Traversing a small path up a small hill, land suddenly stretched out before us. There, what looked like the remains of a dilapidated construction site, came into view. Oh, no more rain. Or water. <laughs> a largely heap of garbage spread out toward spread out off towards the swamp. Probably illegal dumping. I recalled it being in the newspaper. <laughs> it's been quite a while. I wonder what's here. I wonder what's here. When you say it's been a while, you mean the business you had here was with this garbage hill? Dumpster diving. <laughs> it's not garbage. To me, it's a pile of treasure. Rena had already entered that well-known cute mode of hers. So, that meant there is something cute here? Wow, a new pile. I can't wait, I can't wait. She bounded up the un and on the unstable slope. I'd expect no less from a born and bred country girl. Hey, wait, I'm coming. Oh. My city raised self was completely pitiful. It's alright, just stay there, Kitikun. It won't take long. Rena kindly declined my accompaniment. Don't fall. Watch your step. I'm fine, I'm fine. This is nothing at all. Ooh. Literally bounding up the heap of trash, Rena disappeared over the other side. I didn't I didn't like being left behind, but it was still pretty but I was still pretty tired from the whole day, so I just ended up waiting. Without the lively Rena around, the surrounding area quickly fell into silence. The cry of the Hikarasi gently cooled the air. Fairly exhausted, I began to feel a little sleepy. Just then, the sudden noise of scattering pebbles alerted me to somebody's presence. Startled, I turned around. Standing there was a typical-looking photographer. He spied over at me through his camera. His body was tanned and thin. Something about him seemed unreliable and he had a bit of an aloof air about him. Well, he didn't seem like he was a bad guy in any case. 
Well, you surprised me. Although, startled when I turned around, he overplayed his reaction. That was my line. I'm the one who surprised here. My bad, my bad. I didn't mean to startle you. Are you from Hinamizawa? I gathered that he wasn't from that question. Unfazed by my suspicious outlook, he introduced himself without my prompting. Hmm. I'm Tomitake, freelance photographer. I came to Hinam I come to Hinamizawa from time to time. A place like this would have lots of places to, to photograph. Lots of pretty scenery. I didn't ask you who you were. Quite rude to photograph someone without consent, one would think. Hmm? I think it might be illegal. My bad, my bad. I mainly photograph wild birds. They can't refuse, you see. That's true. <laughs> So what, you're saying I'm the same as the birds? Well, no, you see, the image of a young man in twilight was just picturesque. Oh. I apologize for trying to take your picture without asking. Adults are pretty slick. All that annoyance I felt for being startled just a few- Being startled just flew away as he buttered me up. I had no intention of hanging around with this guy, trying to get cozy with me, except it didn't seem like Rena would be back soon. But this older guy, Tomitake-san, he didn't mind my conscious responses and continued rambling on by himself. I would be cautious, stranger danger and everything. Keiichi-kun, sorry to keep you waiting. I'm finished now. Rena popped her head out from one of the lower piles of garbage and waved her hand. You have someone with you? What would she be doing over there? That's what I wanted to know. Treasure hunting. <laughs> Don't know. Maybe she's checking on that dismembered corpse that was out here long ago. Tomitake-san looked shaken up for that for a moment. Oh. Uh-oh, I responded like I would if I were talking with Rena and the others. You guys casually talk about dismembered corpses and stuff. I definitely would like to hang out with them then. <laughs> I have a similar sense of humor. It was quite a disturbing incident. I still haven't found one of the arms. Huh? <laughs> Katie kun sorry to keep you. You were waiting a while, I guess, I guess. I'd best leave you two lovebirds alone. Again, my apologies for startling you, Keiichi kun. Mm -hmm. I don't trust this guy. Tommy Tape chan chortled suggestively, then disappeared into the twilight. Missing my chance to retort put me off a bit. Keiichi kun, are you angry? Why, I wonder. I wonder. It wasn't Renaissance's fault, so I decided just to brush it off for now. How oh, was it? Find the treasure trove? Oh yes, so listen. Uh, um, you see, there was a Colonel Sanders doll. <gasps> oh? Colonel Sanders doll? Oh, that thing. Those statues they always have at that fried chicken place, that life-size dummy. Yes, Colonel Sanders. <sighs> Cute. I want to take it home. Colonel Sanders is cute. I guess he is kind of cute in like a uh, endearing old man sort of way. I could I couldn't tell if she decides what's cute or not, but well, she seems to want it. It's garbage, right? No one would care if you just take it home, right? It's probably clean it though. It's become the base of another pile. I can't dig it out easily. And there's no lamppost over there, so it'll get dark pretty soon. I'm gonna seem quite down about finding a treasure and not being able to bring it back. I'll help you out. To repair you for that delicious picnic you prepared today. Oh, thank you. Birds heading home to roost proclaimed that nightfall would, nightfall would still soon be upon us. 
Hey, Tikkun is going to help. I can take Colonel Sanders home. Oh, oh she's so happy. <laughs> Rena staggered along as if intoxicated in her dreamy state of mind. I tried asking her in a way that wouldn't take her out of her cheery state. Hey, Rena. Long ago, did something happen here? Seems like they were building a dam here. I don't know the details though. Hmm. Just wondering if you knew about it, you know. An accident or something? Mm hmm? Oh? I don't know. Her tone was abruptly frank. It sounded more like a denial than an answer. I must have appeared rather dumbstruck. Rena quickly lightened her expression. <clears throat> I actually didn't live here until a while, until a year ago. Huh? You transferred here too? I was sure of that. So, you see, I don't really know much from before that. Sorry. Don't really know. Don't want to talk about it. That was the kind of feeling she gave me. Mm. Thinking about it, of course. It would be like that. This isn't the type of thing girls would enjoy talking about. Mm, yeah, I don't think anyone would want to talk about, um, like a murder going on in the town where they live. Uh, I know with me with my anxiety, I wouldn't like that. <laughs> it was quite a disturbing incident, disturbing incident. It seems they haven't been able to find one of the arms. If it's just like Tomitake-san said, then I had a feeling only the Hikarashi would know. <laughs> Something about that line is really poetic, I love it. Mm. Only the Hikarashi know. See in the chapter two. Let's read. Let's read the tips. The chip tips for chapter one were a little not particularly interesting, but I think the chapter two ticks will add more context to the story. The Maybara Manor. So, okay, Chan, you're not sneaking rich. What's this all of a sudden? Did I come to school in a limo before? How much do you get for a monthly allowance? About ten dollars? That's a lot of money in 80s money, I would assume. Hmm. That's all right. My, that's a rather plebeian amount. <laughs> His lunch is made up of normal stuff. He isn't rich. <laughs> yeah? Why are they roasting? They just said that- they really just said that he had broke bitch- he has broke bitch energy. What are they talking about? To be asked out of nowhere how much I get, and then told that it's a plebeian amount. How much pocket money do they get? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Rena seemed to pick up on my dubious expression and started giggling. <laughs> hey Chen, your house, you know, it's pretty big, yeah? So the architecture has people around Hinamizawa calling it the Meibara Manor, and it sort of stands out. Maybara Manor? Since the house is so big, everybody's gossiping, wondering exactly how rich you are. I see. Now I get it. Well, the frame of it is huge. I see how it could cause some misunderstandings. Hmm. For my deduction, I wager they spelt, spent too money built on building the house, and that's why they are now broke. I'm pretty sure the house was there before they got there. <laughs> Being broke, how very, very unfortunate. Rika-chan took pity on me as she patted my head. I go from being treated like a millionaire to a beggar. Yeah, sorry for ruining my imagination, but we aren't millionaires or poor. We're just the image of a normal, average household. You can't call it normal with that huge house. The entranceway is all ground, and the gate is large enough for a large truck to get through. Well, that's not normal at all. I wonder who built that house? Who lived in it before? 
I wonder if there's like any sort of lore regarding who lived in that house prior. I've always been told that you should be wary of older houses because at least what my mom said, she would always say that whatever happened in the house before you were there, you know, it might linger and it might become your problem too. Do they, re they really do say the bigger the house, the more prosperous you are. The reason the house is so big is because dad's studio is in it too. There are a bunch of different workshops and lots of his work are hung up in different places. Also, they did build the house. All of them are huge too. For those reasons, my family only uses a third of the house for day-to-day -day living. He planned it out so people and cars could come in and see the gallery he opens up in the house someday. Oh, I see. By the way, the entranceway Mion is talking about is for one for the studio, and is normally sealed sealed off. The entranceway the Maybara family actually uses is a very plain and simple one. The interior is much different from how it looks on the inside. I'd really like a chance to explore Kei Chan's house. Claiming not to be rich but having a home like that. What could be hidden there? Hmm. What could be? Maybe there's something cute hidden. Maybe his dad's paintings are cute. They probably had no money to purchase furniture, so it's filled with Spartan rooms. Satako, come on. If there are carpeted rooms, I'd love to try rolling around on the floor. Yeah? Oh, that would be great. I want to roll around too. Seems like their imaginations are just piling on. Well, sometime in the near future, it wouldn't be bad to invite all of them to the house. Dad is a sucker for the ladies, so he might even let them look around in his studio. <laughs> That'd be cute. The cry of the Hikarashi crescendoed as the sky towered over everything. It was hot and the air was clear. clear. It smelled like the beginning of summer. Okay, now let's read the other tip. This one is slightly less lighthearted. The damn sight murder the damn sight murders last dismemberment newspaper edition from June XX nineteen seventy nine edition. The Shishi Bone City Okinomiya Police Station June XX late at night. Suspects blank 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 and blank were arrested on suspicion of murder and improper disposal of a corpse. The main offender, XX, has been added has been added to the want added to wanted lists nationwide. According to our sources, the six sub suspects were at the Hinamizawa Dam construction site work room on the night on the blank <laughs> at 9 p.m. They were suspected to have assaulted and murdered the site overseer, blank, as a group, dismembering his body and hiding it. On the blank of 8 o'clock in the morning, a report was filled by the Shishi Bone City Hospital, which was a male suspect alluded to having murdered Mr. Blank. When questioned at the police station, the individual confessed to the crime. Since a portion of the body was recovered at the location he gave, he was arrested that afternoon on suspicion of murder and mutilation of a corpse. The rest of the subjects were arrested at the, were arrested the same day, but the main culprit is still at large. Police are currently on his trail. The motive is... Wait a second. What's happened in the 7 in 1979? And this takes place in 1983, so whoever did this could very well still be alive. They might be hiding somewhere. The motive is perpetrated is purported to be a drunken verbal dispute during which he killed the victim in a fit of anger. 
I don't think you mutilate someone after if it's just that. Like, to... To go... Well, I guess it's to, to get rid of the body, but to go that far... I feel like there's a little bit of malice involved in that. However... As there are multiple inconsistencies with their testimonies, the investigation is ongoing. Hmm. Well, and that is chapter 2 of Hikurashi When They Cry. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's sleepcast. I hope you have sweet dreams. <laughs> uh, as sweet dreams as you can have after listening to that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you have sweet dreams. If you're still awake, you can listen to another ASMR videos that I have um, on my channel. And if you want to hang out with me live, uh, you can follow me on Twitch or simply subscribe to this YouTube channel here. Um, yeah. <laughs> and if you'd like to become a pack fun, make sure. Make sure you uh, like and subscribe. Uh, yeah. Um, sweet dreams, and I'll see you in the next video.